Okay, um, everyone, first I'd like to take an opportunity to, um, to thank you for your participation and also um, to apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having. Um, for some reason, we're unable to have our videos on unless we are the host, um, which Ms. Nicole Weber is, is the host so that she can share her screen um, and advance the slides through the presentation. So although there will be other individuals speaking and you know, ideally we would love for you to be able to see our faces and put those faces with names, um, it looks like we're going to be unable to do so this evening. So, but I, I wanna try to keep us on track with time and rather than trying to restart the meeting for a third time, um, I think it's probably best if we go ahead and get started. So um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nicole Bazilla and I wanna thank you again this evening for joining us. Um, we're coming together to discuss supports available to students both in the school setting and also in the community, as well as signs and symptoms of anxiety and depression. I again am the D D district's director of pupil services um, and with me tonight, although you can't see them, are nu numerous school counselors, our student assistance counselor, our, our school nurses, um, social workers, and also our school psychologists. In addition to our school staff, we also have with us representatives from Glade Run and from Holy Family who our district has community partnerships with. The presentation this evening is being recorded, um, so families who are unable to attend have access, access to the resources shared, um, and families who are in attendance this evening can review back to the presentation if they need to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Nicole Weber, who is the meeting host, so that she can go ahead and introduce um, the counseling department and some of the other members of our team. Um, Ms. Weber is our curriculum leader in, um, for school counselors grades K to 12. Thank you, Dr. Bazella. I wanted to take a, a moment to introduce um, some people more in depth. We do have four elementary schools, McIntyre, Ross, Highcliffe, and Westview. And so these are the individuals that would um, be your kind of main contact people at each building. Um, we will have this at the end of the program too with each individual's email. So um, if you aren't sure of who your contact person is, this in the slide at the end will be a great resource for you. At McIntyre Elementary, we have Mrs. Farrell and she covers all the grades at that school. At Ross, we have two counselors. One covers um, grades uh, K through 12, Mrs. Trilla, she is new to us this year. And one covers grades three through five, that's Ms. Barber. And um, at Highcliffe, Mrs. Kempf, she covers all the grades at that elementary school. And Mr. Zalanecki covers all the grades at Westview Elementary. In addition to those building specific folks, we also have Mr. Greathouse and Mr. McDowell. Those are two social workers. They divide the entire district by alphabet. Um, Mr. Greathouse is A through K and Mr. McDowell is last names L through Z. We also have two wonderful school psychologists um, who are with us here tonight and that is Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Kaselica. Uh, Dr. Stevenson would be responsible for the McIntyre and Westview elementaries and Dr. Kaselica would be the Ross and Highcliffe elementaries. We also have with us Mrs. McGuire from Holy Family. She is the elementary student assistance liaison which we'll talk a little more about what that role is and what her role um, that she plays within that getting student services section. And Mrs. Snyder, who is the Glade Run school-based therapy um, person. And she will also talk about um, how she will help students and what resources are available through their program. And to continue with our slides, I'm going to reintroduce Ms. Nicolette Chirilla. Thank you, Ms. Weber. So my name is Nicolette Chirilla, and I am the K-2 counselor at Ross this year. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our role as school counselors in your building and how that differs from school-based therapy. So as school counselors, we implement a comprehensive school counseling program that fosters academic, career, and social emotional development. We are accessible to all students via classroom lessons where we go into classrooms. We now know that this can happen in person and virtually reaching all students. We do small groups with students that are tailored to the needs of that small group and we do do individual sessions. 
So in your experience in the past, you maybe had a guidance counselor in middle school or high school. You maybe met with them one-on-one -on -one and talked a little bit about you know, scheduling or what college you wanted to go to. But our role of school counseling today is so much more than that. Um, again, we run a preventative comprehensive program for all students that covers all areas of well-being. We are very visible in the schools, so you'll find us doing duties, visiting classrooms, making sure that every student knows who we are because every student is technically on our caseload. We do brief solution focused sessions for a short term. So this is usually six to eight sessions with a student if we are doing an individual session or a small group. This is nothing that is long term. We collaborate with families and school staff to aid in student success. So we are at the table for IEP meetings, 504s, district team meetings, just advocating for students and making sure that every child has what they need to succeed. We act as a liaison between the school, outside mental health providers and other agencies, and we are the person that would make those referrals for long-term supports and outside resources. We are also the elementary SAP coordinator. So we are the first person in the SAP cycle that we are gonna learn a little bit more about. So next we have Ms. Lauren Barber, who will be talking about the SAP program and what exactly that is. Thank you. I'm Lauren Barber. I'm the school counselor at Ross and I cover grades three through five. I'm going to talk about what is student assistance program. So SAP consists of a team, including the agency and school staff who are available to help link families to services within the school and community. The SAP team will address and identify any concerns students experience as barriers to learning and to help them overcome those barriers. The SAP team does not diagnose, treat, or refer for treatment, but we will provide resources and supports that will help you make the best choice for your family and child. As the parent or guardian, you do play a very important role in this process. Once the student has been identified who may benefit from a SAP screening, permission is first obtained from the family. This is a free mental health screening that is provided by Holy Family Institute. Once the screening is complete, students and families will continue to receive guidance and support for additional resources. I am now going to pass it on to Gina Farrell, um, and she is going to talk more about the referral process. Thank you, Ms. Barber. Um, again, I am uh, Mrs. Farrell, Gina Farrell, and I am the school counselor at McIntyre Elementary for um, all grades there, K through five. So some of the reasons that um, children are referred to our um, SAP program, specifically at the elementary level, um, you know, it really doesn't fall into one category. It can be, um, anything from academic struggles um, to behavioral issues. Um, it can be social concerns and peer relationships, emotional concerns, um, family changes, um, new mental health um, or medical diagnoses, um, experience with a re recent traumatic event or loss and um, suicidal ideation. Um, and while that may be rare um, at the elementary level, um, you know, we, we, there, we have become involved with kids that um, really struggle, um, you know, emotionally and, you know, have um, needed some interventions in that regard. Um, but I did want to also mention, um, because, you know, over the past year, um, almost all of us are under a constant level of stress. And so in the past, maybe what thing, you know, something that you may feel you would want to, um, you know, contact somebody about at the school, for example, you know, your school counselor. Um, nowadays, you, you might find that you, 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 you're feeling more stress in, in a general sense. Um, and there may not be one big thing that happens or, or one event that's happening, but it's that constant level of stress that we're all under the, this past year. Um, and so we really want um, families to understand that um, we are available. Um, we, we do talk to um, parents and, and kids every day and teachers and administrators trying to find ways to reach families and um, reach out and let you know that we are here and we have um, us as resources or, you know, really is that that first step. And then we do have, you know, all these additional resources of the SAP team 
and um, then Glade Run and Holy Family additionally, who um, we consult with and we have fantastic um, liaisons there that really you know, work with our families. So I think that um, being under this huge you know, amount of stress right now, um, it's really important to understand that, um, that you know, we're, we're there for you. And so um, with that being said, um, the next portion of our presentation is how does my child get referred for um, that, the, the SAP program? And um, Ms. Sherry Kempf is going to present that portion. Good evening, I'm Sherry Kempf. I'm the school counselor at Highcliff Elementary. And so in regards to our SAP program, you know, how does a child get referred? How do you get your child linked up to the services? Um, that they may need or just to get an idea, you know, whether your child should be talking to someone or maybe have further intervention. And so at the elementary level, your child can be referred in any of the following ways. Um, the first way is they can refer themselves. So if I'm meeting with a child individually or maybe a child is struggling in the classroom and they say, hey, Mrs. Kempf, I want to talk to you. And maybe during our conversation, they may say, you know, I think I might need to talk to someone regularly. I think I might need a little bit more extra help right now. Um, you know, I'm really struggling at home or I have something that happened or I'm dealing with a lot of stress. And so a child is able to do that. Now, we still need parent permission because they are um, under the age of 14. And so that would be a time that we would reach out to you to then get your permission for um, the SAP screening. Um, you as a parent also have the option to refer your student to the SAP program. And that could be you know, reaching out to any one of our school counselors um, or any member of our SAP team and just saying, I think I would like to get my child screened. Um, it's as simple as us emailing you a form or sending it home, however you would prefer. Um, and once we get that form signed back, we send that on and we'll talk about those next steps in a minute. But it's a very simple and quick, easy process. Um, we could have a staff referral. Um, the teachers are the ones that come in contact with your children every day. Um, they see them every day, they know their strengths, they know their weaknesses, um, and so they really are great at identifying if a child is struggling, um, and maybe it's something a little bit more than, you know, the normal. Um, and so we do get a lot of staff referrals. That's usually, you know, the first person that says, hey, you know, can you check in with this child? Um, maybe there's something going on. And so our staff is really great at identifying students that may need more support. Um, and then it also may come as a result of a team meeting or discussion. Um, Parent-teacher conferences, we, a lot of our SAP referrals come from those when we meet as a team. Maybe it comes through an IEP team meeting discussion. Um, and we constantly within the buildings meet as teams, you know, to try to problem solve whatever is happening with any of our students. And so this SAP referral could come from any one of these avenues. And it always goes, it filters through the school counselors in all of the buildings, um, whether it comes from a parent, whether it comes from the child, whether it comes from the staff, um, that SAP referral filters through the school counselor. And then we forward that on to our SAP liaison. And so I would like to introduce to you our elementary SAP liaison, from Holy Family, Miss Emily McGuire. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm the Student Assistance Program Liaison from Holy Family. Um, thank you for that introduction, Sherry. So I just wanna talk a little bit more about the um, Student Assistance Program screening. Um, so essentially, a form is sent home to you uh, from the school counselor from the building that your student goes to. Um, or this could be done like in the mail, um, email, or, or sent home in, in your student's backpack. Um, so parent guardian consent is necessary for the SAP screening. Um, your role as a parent is really vital in this process. Um, so that's a very important piece. And then that consent form needs to be returned to the school counselor as soon as possible. Um, the school counselor then sends me the form. Um, Liz Lapore is the student assistance program liaison for the middle and high school, um, but I am for all four elementary schools. Um, I will then reach out to reach out to you and schedule a SAP screening. Um, and I also like to listen to any parent concerns. Um, just get your perspective kind of on the needs of your child um, or your family. And then we can plan, you know, a virtual screen or um, in person if possible. 
So during a SAP screening, um, I meet with the student one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, obviously, like I said, during virtual learning, we're doing a virtual screen, but if the student is in school um, or hybrid traditional learning, um, I get to go to the school and meet them in person, which is a really cool aspect of my job. Um, so I ask them about school, uh, their interests, what they like to do in their free time, um, what things are like at home and, and how they're really feeling. And really the whole purpose is getting the student's perspective on, on their situation and how they're doing. Um, I really like to try to get to know the student as best as I can so that I can make um, appropriate suggestions. Um, but, you know, it's also really important, you know, I always try to ask the student at the end of my screen, you know, what would help you have a better school year? What can we do that would help you? Um, and I always like to try to take that in consideration and then uh, make sure that the school district and all these team players, you know, are aware of that and we can try to meet that student where they're at. So after I finish the screen, um, I reach out to uh, the parent, I uh, use the family and discuss appropriate options um, with you. So um, some options that we could have is outpatient counseling, um, family counseling. Um, there's a whole variety, groups, different things that we can do that would really support your student, academic supports even. Um, I communicate these recommendations with the school counselor and the student assistance program team. Um, of course, if your consent was given, like I said, that's very vital. Um, additional forms might be sent home after that. So if we talk about, um, you know, your student getting involved in outpatient counseling through Glade Run, you know, we can certainly get that form sent home to you so that you could fill it out, send it back, and the process is rolling and your student can get in as soon as possible. Um, I also then follow up, uh, the school counselor follows up as well, in order just to determine um, if the student was linked to services and if it's going okay. Um, sometimes I'll even be able to kind of check in with the student and see how they're doing. Um, so that's really the whole purpose is just getting the student connected to the service that would um, be most appropriate for them, would help them the most, and that's most convenient and, you know, workable for your family. So, without further ado, since I talked about Glade Run, I would like to turn it over to um, Amy Snyder. Thank you, Emily. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Snyder. I am the Program Manager of School-Based Mental Health Services. Earlier, we partner with the North Hill School District to provide mental health in all of the schools within your district. We've been the provider for the past several years. We also offer services in the hub in Westview, and we will offer them via telehealth currently during COVID. And we are a telehealth provider, so that is a service that we can continue in the future. Um, the next several slides here are introductions to the therapists that are currently providing the services in your building. I will not um, read through each one, but there is a little biography and a picture of each therapist. You will kind of have a name with a face, especially being virtual right now. You may not have had the opportunity to meet your child's therapist. Um, and then there's a breakdown of which therapist is in each school. Um, and as you can see here, some of the therapists overlaps buildings. Um, there has been continuity. A couple of these therapists have been um, in the district since we began services and then most of the others have just been additions as we've continued to expand our services. So what is school-based mental health? This refers to the mental health services for school-age students addressing social, emotional, and behavioral concerns that they're faced with in everyday life. These services are also offered during the day and continue through the summer months if, and, and that's offered at the schools if you choose. Um, just like uh, education, we know our, our kids can regress in the summer, so we really encourage um, their participation throughout the summer and maybe more of a little bit of a relaxed setting, um, maybe some groups. Um, so it's, it's something that is um, offered. What is school-based therapy? So school-based therapy teaches ways of dealing with stressful life events and circumstances. 
The counselor helps individuals analyze and respond to pressure he or she may put on themselves or negative thoughts they might have about themselves or others. They can help your child improve communication skills and show them ways to cope when life gets hard. School-based therapy can include group therapy, family therapy, and individual therapy. So these are all offered at the school during the school day. The Glade Run therapists work very closely with the students and families, as well as with the school counselors and the SAP liaisons to find the best time to pull students for services during their day. Earlier in the presentation, um, you heard a little bit about the school counselor's role. So here I'd like to explain the role of the therapist. So we are an added layer of support to the district, to the clients, to the students and families. Um, we work very closely with the school counselors and SAP liaisons to meet the needs of the students and families we serve. The therapist will work collaboratively with each, with each student and their family to complete an intake. Part of the intake process is completing a psychosocial assessment, developing a treatment area, I'm sorry, a treatment plan to address all areas of concern. So that includes parent concern, um, teacher concerns, concerns the students may have themselves, areas they would like to grow in. From there, the therapist will provide a mental health diagnosis and determine a course of treatment. Therapists use evidence-based therapeutic modalities and interventions. At Glade Run, we pride ourselves on open communication, so the ther therapists collaborate rate regularly with all outside providers as well as members of the treatment team. Now, of course, this is a confidential process, so uh, releases are obtained on who you choose for us to share information with. These services will be billed through your insurance, which will be thoroughly discussed with you during your first phone conversation with your therapist. Um, and, and this service is more long-term, and it, and it can be weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly based on the diagnosis and treatment plan that was developed with specific goals and, and objectives in mind in reaching those positive outcomes. Signs of anxiety. So what is anxiety? It's the persistent or extreme forms of fear. As you can see here, anxiety can take on a variety of symptoms. Listed below are six main signs sleep disturbance, restlessness, muscle tension, fatigue, irritability, and difficulty concentrating. For some sh children, however, anxiety can go beyond typical symptoms of neg and negatively affect friendships, family relationships, participation in extracurricular activities, and even their schoolwork. Often anxiety interferes with normal daily living. You know your child best, so if you feel your child is exhibiting some signs of anxiety or seem unlike themselves, reach out to your school counselor. You know, like Gina mentioned earlier, um, we are all under so much stress and pressure. It's hard to believe this pandemic is almost been a year that we've been faced with it. And Interactions, they're, they're, they're missing those face-to-face -face interactions. So um, every new interaction can have some level of stress or anxiety. So next, here we have the signs of depression. Again, what is depression? It's a mood disorder that causes distressing symptoms that affect how you feel, think, and handle daily activities, such as sleeping, eating, or working. Occasionally being sad or feeling hopeless is part of every child's life. However, some children feel sad or uninterested in things that they used to enjoy or for, feel helpless or hopeless in situations they are able to change. Listed here are the most common signs of depression. Irritability or anger, continuous feelings of sadness and hopelessness, social withdrawal, increased sensitivity to rejection, changes in appetite, changes in sleep, vocal outbursts or crying, 
difficulty concentrating, fatigue and low energy, physical complaints, reduced ability to function during events and activities at home or with friends, in school, extracurricular activities, and other hobbies or interests, feelings of worthlessness or guilt, impaired thinking or concentration, and thoughts of death or suicide. The pandemic that we are all faced with is and has been very difficult for everyone. So please know that these symptoms are not all encompassing. So you need to take into account your child's day-to-day -day behavior. And if your child is experience, experiencing symptoms for two weeks or longer, you should contact your school counselor and seek professional help. Uh, assessments. So how do we come to the diagnosis that we come to in our treatment plans? Um, we, we do formalized assessments to help um, monitor, provide a baseline, and then we do these assessments throughout treatment. We use them as screening tools, as aids in diagnosis, as symptom tracking tools that can help with overall symptom severity, as well as track the improvement of specific symptoms with treatment. Now, the three main assessments that we use are listed here. The GAD-7 is for generalized anxiety disorder, and it's useful in primary care and mental health settings as a screening tool and symptom severity measure for the four most common anxiety disorders, which include generalized anxiety, panic disorder, social phobia, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The PHQ-9 depression scale is actually a brief nine item self-reporting screening tool that may help identify symptoms that could relate to depression. There is an adult and a teen version. It's one of the most validated tools in mental health and can be a powerful tool to assist clinicians with diagnosing depression and monitoring those treatment symptoms. And lastly, the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. Um, this is a questionnaire used for suicide assessment development by multiple institutions. The scale is evidence supported and is part of the national and international public health initiative involving the assessment of suicidality. So if you would like your child to receive services through um, Glade Run and through the school-based mental health, you know, reach out to your school counselor. They can provide you with the referral and we have a pretty quick and efficient process to get your child linked and begin services. Um, I, I do always like to point out mental, mental health is a choice um, and pr there are many providers um, in the area so Glade Run does provide a continuum of care um, with services for adults, children, families throughout Western Pennsylvania. Um, we offer services in the home, school, and community setting. And as I mentioned, there are other providers out there as well. So keep that in mind if you, you know, if you're referred to a specific level of care and um, there's a wait list, you have the choice to choose your provider and get your child linked as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you to all of our presenters. Um, this does conclude our presentation this evening. Um, we hope that we have provided you with information so that you as parents can better understand um, the process of the student assistance program and also those outside community resources that are available. Um, so you can think about how those services, you know, may, may help your child if you are experiencing some sort of difficulty. Um, that partnership and the link that these outside agencies have with our school counselors, um, what our school counselors can do, you know, also to, to assist your child and your family. So, you know, really tonight we want you to leave with a, 
an understanding that there is help available. Um, there's help, you know, through the district and also through these outside partners that, you know, that we have. Um, so we thank you again for joining us. I apologize um, with the technical difficulties. Again, I know that it, it wasn't ideal that you can't see our faces, um, but if you do have questions and concerns, again, here's a slide that shows, you know, each elementary counselor as your point person, um, email addresses are included. My, you know, my email and my my number is always open as well. Our school nurses, our school psychologists, um, are resources that you can also reach out to. So again, this is concluding our presentation. And um, if you have questions and concerns, please contact your your appropriate school counselor. Thank you, everybody.